Okay, so it looks like we're in for a bit of a treat next week where we are getting some days at 37 degrees or hotter. A little bit of a welcome summer's coming here in Perth, Australia. So today I'm going to share some tips and tricks on what to do when you do get hot weather or a heat wave and also some things to avoid and do not do right before some really hot weather. Growing food here in Perth can be a struggle in summer. It's sort of like survival mode in many parts of our garden but these tips are going to help you really maximize the amount of food you're going to get and also help you reduce as many losses as you can in the garden over summer because we don't want our plants to die. All right so first up this is something you want to avoid doing and that is planting new plants. So if you see some hot weather coming some above average temperatures like next week with 37 degrees what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop all planting I'm not going to plant any more plants until after that heat wave has gone through um, and because both sides of that heat wave we've got lower temperatures we've got 26 degrees or lower on both sides of this heat wave so I can just wait for that to be finished before I plant any new plants and that is because planting new plants is a little bit of a stressful time for for the plants they are going into a new environment they're getting new temperatures new soil everything is new so we don't want to stress them out even further by planting them right before some hot weather and also because their roots aren't established yet they've only got small amount of roots and they haven't gone deep enough into the soil so they're going to dry out really quickly they're going to get too hot they're going to overheat and die another thing that i do is when we are getting closer to summer is i will try and harvest as much as i can um, before a heat wave or before we get some really hot weather and that is to again reduce the amount of stress on that plant so if you do have some zucchinis that are ready or some mulberries that need picking um, any of that fruit that is pretty much ready to go I would be harvesting that before we get those hot days so that reduces the amount of energy input that the plant needs to try and put into those fruits and it can focus on just surviving those hot days. Next up we're going to mulch. We're going to make sure all our gardens are topped up with mulch and make sure it is a decent amount of mulch. It's a thick layer. It is going to protect the soil. It's going to stop the soil draw drying out as much and it's going to help retain some of that moisture as well as keep the soil cool. So we want to make sure that the end of spring or before summer starts that we are mulching our gardens with a top up of fresh mulch. All right so next up we want to provide shade even if that is just temporary shade for a heat wave we want to try and protect our plants and our seeds seedlings as much as we can. So whether you set up an umbrella or you have some shade cloth or some temporary shade that you can add not only to your garden but also to your worm farms or your chickens or anything like that because we want to protect the whole garden from this extra intense heat and make sure that they can survive. So if you have got some young seedlings or plants that you've planted recently those were the ones that I would prioritize first in creating shade because they don't have established roots yet and their roots will be quite shallow and susceptible to overcoming and more susceptible to heat stroke and dying because of this intense heat. So prioritize your young plants and seedlings and get them covered and shaded for these extra hot days. Planting deciduous fruit trees in front of your veggie pets can be a really great idea because they are going to provide shade in summer when they've got leaves on them and they're going to have this really beautiful dappled light allowing your veggie plants to still get enough light but also protected from that really harsh summer sun. And then in winter when we want as much light as we can they're going to lose their leaves letting all of that sunlight in and allowing your winter veggie plants to thrive so in my garden out the front where is there where there are no established fruit trees I have some shade cloth that I'm going to put back on my veggie patch for summer so let's get that done let's make sure these seedlings and young veggies are covered ready for this hot 37 degree day or two days actually it's going to be hot um, but they're going to stay on for summer because here in Perth we get a lot of weather that is over 45 degrees and it's just too hot to leave small veggies and annuals uncovered. So I've got these shade cloths, um, they detach with little clips so I can t remove them over winter and I've left the top on pretty much the whole year because it doesn't really matter in winter the sun tracks lower in the sky so it's on more of an angle it's always coming in and getting my veggie patch so that's fine to have that top on and in summer the the sun is really coming from above a lot of the day so that protects them from that midday sun but now we need to level up 
37 degrees and higher 40s 45 degrees are coming and I want to put the rest of the sides on I do have one side uncovered and that is because that is not where we're getting direct sunlight so it's letting um, airflow in it's letting light in. it's also letting pollinators in so I'm not blocking out all my pollinators by having all the sides covered I'm just protecting them from that really intense heat so all the sides have been up the top here over winter um, and they're just clipped on on these clips here so I can just take this off unclip this and roll it down and then we have some clips at the bottom here so down here I just clip it in place down here So that's secured on that side and over here clipped and now we have a side. Alright so we've got our shade, we've mulched, now what? We want to make sure that our gardens are kept hydrated so we're going to water them at different times of the day. First up we're going to water them early in the morning so on a really hot day get up early, water your gardens. Try and um, do it slowly, don't just pour a whole lot of water on and walk away because it's going to run off. So we want to try and get a slow consistent watering going and whether you have drip feeders or you have a, um, I've got a weeper hose, they distribute the water slower so that it's not just being poured on and draining off. Um, if not just use a hose but try and do it at a slower rate than just pouring it on and continuously walking um, and that's going to help your plants have time to absorb that water before it runs away. So another tip I have is make sure you have a hose really close by. If your hose is really far away or it's a pain to unravel then you're probably not going to do it very often and those hot days your plants are going to suffer and they may not make it. So having a, a water source close and convenient to your gardens is going to make a really huge difference in keeping your plants alive over summer or on those really hot days. So you can find the links to all of the equipment that I use in my garden in the description below, um, the hoses and the weeper hoses and I've got a few other articles uh, that I've written about keeping plants alive in a heat wave so I'll link those in the description too. I also love the fact that I can turn off and on just here. No kinking the hose or running back and turning it off and on and there's a whole bunch of different settings on here. Okay so now we've watered our gardens in the morning, they're mulched, they're ready to go, they've got a little bit of shade, uh, now what do we do? How do we make sure that our gardens stay alive on these really hot days? Also what I do is at the end of the day I go back and I re-water so that if you see any of your plants like really looking limp and dehydrated then it's a good idea to wait until the sun's gone down, it's cool and you can do a little bit of a refresh a little bit of a refresh watering and that's going to help perk your plants back up, hydrate them and they'll have all night to start absorbing that moisture and be ready to go the next day. So a little bit of a refreshing afternoon water is going to really help your plants bounce back. And if you are planting in containers then this is a really good time to move those containers under cover and protect them from those really hot days, that midday sun or that afternoon really hot sun. Um, put them under cover. So I do have some pots and I have my very first original gardens that I created here and they are on wheels for this exact reason. That is because growing food in Perth is really hard in summer and so I created these pallet planters on wheels so that I can move them under cover and protect them from that really hot sun on those hot days and I wouldn't lose all of my plants. Um, it was something that I really struggled with when I first started growing food here in Perth. It's something that is, was completely different to me coming from New Zealand, coming from really rich organic soil um, with a lot of rainfall in a year and not those really intense summer 45 degree days. So that was a huge learning curve for me and one of the first things I did was create these pallet planters that I could move undercover. And I still use these to this day. They are my kitchen garden so they are full of food and they're right outside my kitchen which is so convenient and great but it also is good because I can move them in um, when I am expecting those hot 
hot days so let's go move those pellet planters undercover so they get morning sun and afternoon sun but not that really hot midday to afternoon sun This is another reason that I do advocate having container gardens, even if you have a huge garden. Um, having some things growing in pots, especially things that don't like that really intense heat, you can move them away um, easily. So these are things like cucumbers, I find that cucumbers do not like that really intense hot, hot sun. So I will always move my cucumbers under shade when it is really hot weather especially in summer all right so another tip i have for watering your plants is move back some of the mulch so quite often our mulch can sort of act as a barrier and it will absorb a lot of that moisture and help keep our plants cool but in the process it can absorb too much of that water and it won't actually get into the soil especially when i am expecting a heat wave i will do that just to make sure that i know the soil is getting that water that is able to be absorbed and it's not just being held in the mulch above ground all right so the last two things that i want to talk about are again things that we don't want to do I, we don't want to be pruning our plants in right in those hot hot days in the middle of summer because pruning plants is creating a wound it's going to stress the plant out and that plant's going to have to put energy into covering that wound so we want to make sure that we're not pruning or we're not cutting our plants when we are getting these really really hot days because that's going to really stress the plant out and pour more energy into fixing those wounds than um, staying alive so don't prune don't try not to cut your plants when we are getting these really hot hot days we want to make sure that our plants are tied up they're all tidy they're ready to go so that they don't have to add any extra energy into holding themselves because sometimes when we get these hot hot days we also get a lot of wind um, so the plants are going to get battered around more and if they are having to put energy into that then Heal, healing from bruised damaged leaves the key is we want to reduce as much stress as we can on those plants so they can focus on surviving rather than healing and you know holding themselves up so we're going to tie up our plants we're going to make sure that they're secure and tied down um, especially our tomato plants this time of year we're growing a lot of tomatoes so i've got those staked and tied and just really nice and secure so if we do get really hot summer winds um they're going to be fine and survive. All right, so now you're all set to go. Your plants are going to hopefully survive these hot days. And if you do have any friends that are gardening here in Perth or in other hot places in the world, then please share this video and try and help them keep their plants alive. Mm -hmm.